make for a successful grain rescue is everybody goes home alive. That's that simple, okay? If we save the person's life and all my rescuers go home alive. Let's face it, it'd be nice if we never had to enter a grain bin, but we'd be kidding ourselves. You know, it, it, it's, it's a necessary evil. You have to enter grain bins, but there's steps you can take to be safe about entering grain bins. We understand how grain flows and we know how grain works. We have set it up so we, we have proper ropes and safety harnesses on on site here at the farm. And we're seeing generations change. We was having some 50 farm fatalities a year, 50, with over 30% of them being under the age of 16. Now, 2016, we average 16. 2014, we average 12. We see it bounce up now, but, but when the University of Kentucky can document the deaths, and over a 20 year time period, you go from averaging 50 to 16, something is working. Obviously, if you have someone trapped in a grain bin, some type of system to be able to create a safety area around the entrapped person while you're operating would be the most important thing. Do I have the resources as a fire department to deal with the situation? I may have the manpower, but do I have the equipment and the training that's needed to take care of any particular situation? Or do I need to call another organization in? Knowing how to do it, knowing the abilities to do it, being able to do it when you call to do it. But I hope that we never need it. The best day at my firehouse the day my trucks didn't move. Because nobody in my community lost their home and nobody died that day. You enter a grain bin, put your rope and harness on. Farmers put safety first. The number one rescue tool in the world is the human mind. Take what you got, take what you know, work as a team and get it done. It takes just five seconds for a person to become engulfed by flowing grain. It takes 60 seconds to become completely submerged and risk death by suffocation. Response time is critical, and having the proper equipment to facilitate a speedy rescue is crucial. Developed specifically to help facilitate a rapid response in grain bin entrapment accidents, the rescue sleeve has been a long time in the making, according to Dale Dobson, Safety Administrator at the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. I thoroughly believe it is a solid, workable ideal that separates my weight from you so I can pull you out, so I can help pull you out. And, and it's rapid and it's quick. The Turtle Tube Grain Bin Rescue Sleeve was designed and developed by farmers and rescue workers to relieve pressure from the patient's most vital organs while rescue workers remove grain. Because time is so critical, we invented the Turtle Tube to be lightweight. The convenient storage bag has a shoulder strap that the rescuer can simply drape over his or her shoulder as they make their way up the bin. No need to carry multiple heavy sections. The storage size of the turtle tube is just 15 inches in diameter, making the turtle tube an easy fit for most fire truck compartments or on site. The turtle tube can be lowered into the grain by attaching standard rigging equipment to the straps on the carrying bag. Deployment of the turtle tube is as simple as one, two, three. Step one, loosen two wing nuts. Step two, expand the turtle tube. Step three, retighten the wing nuts to secure the turtle tube at its deployed size. In less than 60 seconds, the turtle tube is ready for action. By slipping the turtle tube around the patient, the rescuer creates a dam, preventing pressure from the grain, as well as the added weight from the rescuers from further crushing the patient. The Great Plains Center for Agricultural Health reports that a person buried to the waist in grain requires a force equivalent to their own body weight plus 600 pounds to free them. The force required to remove a person buried under grain can exceed 2,000 pounds. You can become engulfed in flowing grain in many ways, including avalanche entrapment, unloading entrapment, bridging entrapment, and grain transport vehicle entrapment. Historically, rescuers would use whatever they had on hand to create a dam around the victim. This could include longboards or plywood. 
As you can see here, you can use these items in conjunction with the turtle tube to create a wide outer dam. The turtle tube is easily lifted around the victim. Rescue workers work together to edge the turtle tube down through the grain. Once the turtle tube is in place, the rescue workers use whatever they have on hand to scoop the grain from around the patient. This can include cups, buckets, jugs, shop vacs, or augers. After the grain has been removed from the space around the patient's vital organs, such as brain, heart, lungs, and stomach, the extrication process can begin. Entrapments and engulfments have been documented in a wide variety of grains, including corn, soybeans, oats, wheat, flaxseed, and canola. The majority, over 50% of documented cases, have involved corn. The turtle tube was designed for grain bin entrapment and was not designed for use in sand, mud, or trench rescues. Despite mounting awareness campaigns, grain bin accidents continue with 2010 ranking as the most hazardous year on record, according to Purdue University. 59 entrapments and 26 deaths were reported that year. There were 38 entrapments and 17 deaths in 2014. Because we at Turtle Plastics would like to see the number of grain bin engulfment and entrapment fatalities fall to zero, we have competitively priced the turtle tube so that every rural fire department and every commercial or residential farm can have one on site ready to help save a life. For more information about the Turtle Tube Grain Bin Rescue Sleeve or any of Turtle Plastics' great products, visit us online at turtleplastics.com.